Alrighty guys, so what is up, CrazyBitch42 here, welcome back to some more Katawa Shoujo. Last time we left off, it was a cluster of an episode. We were with Imi, for like the first part, doing our morning run. Then we went with Kenji in the showers, which was weird. And very, very, very weird. Uh, and then we came back to the classroom, got involved in an argument between Lily, Shizuri, and Misha, and then we took Lily's side. So it, it, it has been a morning for Hasao. Uh, but yeah, so you guys... Might be starting to figure out who I'm leaning towards as the episodes continue to go on. I believe this is episode 10, actually. So we're already 10 episodes in, three hours into the game, and we're not even done with Act 1 yet, I think, right? We're not even done. So there's still a lot more to go. Uh, so prepare for the series to be continuing some more episodes. And uh, yeah, let's just jump right back into it. Mirrors one on the screen because I accidentally clicked, so we can read the line before. Uh, and this was the line. Hanako doesn't come to the morning class at all, leaving her seat looking empty and lonely in the back of the room. And then we continue from there. I have to tell her that Lily was looking for her if I see her later. After the events of this morning, class is pretty boring in comparison. I turn the pages of my textbook lazily. I have a bit of catching up to do, despite trying to keep up with my studies at the, uh, at the hospital. But I'm not feeling that enthusiastic about it. The clock at the front of the room sounds unbearably loud. The teacher hasn't said anything in over seven minutes. Instead, opting to cover the board in rows and rows of equations taken directly from the book. The rhythmic clashing of chalk on blackboard uh, seems to synchronize perfectly with the ticking of the clock. I'm set to copy down the equations just to pass the time, even though they are right there in the textbook. When the bell rings, I'm not in a hurry because I have nothing to do. So I stay for a while reviewing what we've covered uh, in class today. I prefer to leave last anyway, so I don't have to deal with the with crowding in the hallways. I know Shizune and Misha have also stayed behind, talking to someone from another class. Shizune's signing so fast that her hands make noises like swords cutting through the air. Maybe there is a maybe there's pent up anger in there. Misha's trying desperately to keep up, but it's clear she can barely manage to even understand her. I put my head down. Whatever they're discussing, it looks like serious business. Shizune signs to the point where her wrists crackle, and Misha struggles to spit it out in word form. Sometimes she trips over herself like she's dealing with tongue twisters. And then on top of that, she has to sign back anything the other girl says. Seems like a rough job. Misha looks tired, like she's about to faint. Luckily for her, their business is soon finished and the girls sit down on their, on their seats again. Ah, I'm so tired. She's hanging her head limply on her desk, looking exhausted. I'll use the opportunity to reconcile with Shizune a bit without getting roped into the student council thing again. Though I suspect that door is now closed for me. <laughs> Festival preparations must be tough for you. Indeed, the people- oh, my leg. Indeed, the people in this school seem to be taking the festival very seriously. Whenever I see people idling around before and after classes, they're always talking about their plans for it. It's kind of neat to see everyone being so enthusiastic about it. I'm probably the only one who doesn't have something to do. Shizune scoffs at me first as if trying to decide whether to ignore or sneer at me, but in the end she starts signing without doing either. Misha perks up, looking at her hands with slightly unfocused eyes. She signs with harsh, heavy, dramatic strokes. Misha translates her signing into speech for me. She does it so well, it's almost like Shizune is actually speaking, transmitting her thoughts directly through Misha. She must have practiced it vigorously. Well, of course, we're in the student council, you know, so we're pretty busy. It's an important duty of ours to ensure the success of the festival with all our strength. We should shame ourselves in front of the past student council generations if the festival were to fail. <laughs> That's why there must be no no flaws, no... Uh, I think that was... Income braces? No, nothing that might make the festival short of perfect. Shizune's passionate uh, speech and Misha's enacting are really oddly fitting of them. Oh, hello. Oh, it's Hanako. I look over my shoulder and see Hanako peering timidly into the classroom, most of her body hidden behind the door. Hey, playing delinquent again? Hanukkah blushed his heart at Misha's straightforward jab, even if it was only in jest. Ah, my news. Mm. Shizune stares at her probingly, causing Hanukkah to look down and start backing away to the point where only her fingers can be seen wrapped nervously around the edge of the door. Maybe she is showing her dislike of Hanukkah by associating of her dislike of Lily. It appears so, and Hanukkah probably knows it as well. What is it, Hanukkah? Has Lily been here? Sorry, I haven't seen Sata. She uh, came by in the morning, though. Tao keeps looking uneasily at Shijuri, who stares back at her with her usual studying gaze. What is she trying to do? Of course, Shijuri isn't going to look away, and she's intimidating enough as it is. So I can only imagine how terrified Hanako must be. 
It is a little uncomfortable watching Hanako's reaction to Shiyuni's normal behavior. This is what happens when two people of two different extremes meet, it seems. Do, do you know where she is? If she has any sense in her head, she's in her classroom working on their festival project. But who knows where that woman is loitering at. You need to find her? She was looking for you in the morning, but I guess you haven't missed each other. She waits a little without answering the simple question, looking awfully like she's not sure if it's proper to answer such a question. Y yeah. I can come with you, if it's okay. Nanako nods frantically, still on guard, her shoulders stiff like wood. I get the feeling that she might be more comfortable by herself after all, but it's too late to back off now. She has this really troubled expression she seems to wear almost constantly. One that makes me constantly be on my guard myself, I wonder why. I kind of understand why she's always seems why she always seems to be so wary, or maybe more like why there could be a person like her. But I still have no idea how I should act around such a person. It's dinner time soon, were you planning to eat with Lily? She nods slightly. So she must have been trying to get in the cafeteria. Well, there's something of a dinner crowd, just like the cafeteria is crowded during lunch. It's not as bad because dinner time is longer than lunch hour, but I can understand why Hanako could be discouraged from going in. I pick up my bag and we take our leave. Hanako skips a little to meet my initial pace, so I slow down to match her speed. It doesn't take long for us to be walking. <coughs> it doesn't take long for us to be walking at a comfortable pace down the hallway. It almost feels like we're going for a stroll together, something that I can't say I've really done before with the girl. Hanako doesn't seem to be thinking the same thing, though. Uh, even though we are walking at the same pace, she never comes within arm's reach of me. I guess she's l still a little uncomfortable around me, given how shy she is. There doesn't seem to be much helping it, at least for now. By the time we arrive at the cafeteria, there's not much of a crowd there, but Lily is nowhere to be seen. Hanako's head sinks even lower than usual. Have you looked somewhere else already? Did just at the library, I was reading. So she does spend the classes she skips at the library. Ah, uh, so not exactly a thorough search, then. Well, if I had to guess, she'd be in her own class, like Suzune, right? Right. With the slightest of nods, Hanako agrees with my reasoning. God, she's being so awkward. Uh, it's like I need double-layered silk gloves with padding to even begin interacting with her. Some small talk might help her become a little bit more used to me. It isn't hard to tell that the silence between us is hovering on the edge of both our minds. So you know, usually hang out together after class, right? Y yes. I'm not quite sure what I expected from her answer, nor why I even asked the question. That much was rather obvious, after all. She doesn't seem to like the type to. She doesn't seem like the type to cultivate a social circle, either. So I suspect that Lily may well be her only friend. Must be a pain being in different classes, I'm guessing. She gives a sharp, almost reflex nod. Compared to Lily's careful thought about her actions and speech, Hanako hastens to make her answers as prompt and short as possible. Lily comes by the classroom, though, even when she's busy. She gives a small smile as she says it, evidently appreciating the fact that Lily goes out of her way to help her. <laughs> it's pretty cute, really. There isn't any need to say any, uh, say more. Both of us contact uh, that the discussion reached the end. As we, ascended, as we ascend the stairs back to the lobby, we are met by a group of students heading downstairs like a school of fish moving from one feeding area to another. They seem to be keeping mostly to themselves, but before I can notice her doing so, Hanako has moved around behind me. Hey, you alright? Just, just keep going. The students pass us without as much as a second glance, and Hanako takes up position to my side again as we enter the building. Her momentarily reprieve from her anxiety all but snatched away. Even as we climb towards the third floor, she doesn't seem to relax. It isn't as if I've never known a shy person before, or even shy girls, but Hanako seems to be pretty far beyond what I'd call normal in her fear of other people. If it weren't for Lily's acting as a mediator, I thought Hanako would have been able to walk beside me like this. She seems to be completely she seems to completely shut down in the presence of others. The rest of us walk up to Lily's classroom, continues to fuck words. The rest of us, the rest of the walk up to Lily's classroom continues in strained silence while I ruin her inability to socialize at all. Jesus, that was difficult. After we make our way up the stairs, the noise coming from Lily's class classroom is audible from... Oh yeah, I do hear things. Is audible from halfway down the hallway. I wasn't expecting such a din at all. Well, I guess we found her. This wasn't hard. Then I'll go come here first and come for me for backup, I wonder. Well, if that's true, then at least she's starting to trust me a little. That can be—that can only be a good thing. Eventually, two of us reach the door to class 
Three two with Hanako less than subtle positioning herself behind me. I open the door. Oh god, this room is so different than the other one. Inside is a hive of activity. Seemingly every student in the class talking at once as they work hurried on their s separate tasks. Words are hard. Going by the paint cans, decorations, and banners being made, it must be for the upcoming school festival. I guess my first priority should be finding Lily. Hmm. There. Finding a monkey din and is surprisingly easy, not the least because of her looks. With a couple of students gathered around her as she stands at the front of the class, she seems to be in charge of preparations, or at least busy organiz organizing them. Carefully negotiating a path through the various students hunched over the floor for lack of desk space, I raise a hand entirely out of habit as we finally reach Lily. Hi, Lily! She perks her head up as she breaks off talking to a noticeably smaller girl who must be her classmate trying to listen as best she can. Sorry, who? Ah, uh, sorry. Hasao, I have Hanako too. Ha hi. She's pretty skittish considering the number of people around. It isn't too hard to work out why. Lily takes a moment's pause to assess the situation before turning to the other students once again. For the moment, just ask Moria for advice. For his advice, Kenji's busy with painting one of the banners already. Oh god, Kenji's in this class? Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh god. A quick nod and she bounces off, fingers carefully sliding along the wall, uh, wall's face for orientation. Wait, Kenji? That Kenji? I quickly turn around, turn about, leaving to the side to see past Hanako. Sure enough, in, in the corner of the room, Kenji's hunched over a sheet of cloth as he paints it. His eyes remain only inches from the brush, reminding me of how close he had to be to make out my face when I met him. Sorry about that, our class doesn't have many students with even partial eyesight. So they're in high demand. That's right, class 3-2 was specially for uh, students with poor vision. Preparing for the festival must be pretty arduous for them. Need a hand that I can give you help if you need some. Maybe Hanako could too. A chance to set her mind on something would be good for her. Would do her good, but I doubt she has the courage to ask outright. She quickly nods in affirm- Affirmination. Affirmation. Whatever. Afterwards. So I'm confident I made the right move. Lily now gives a noticeable sigh of relief. Oh, that's good. That might actually get finished. This might actually get finished before everyone goes off to dinner now. Would you be able to help the person painting the main banner? It's a big task for him to do, but nobody else can help. Kenji? Sure. She seems surprised that I know him. I can't really blame her. I take it you've met. Our rooms in the dorm are right next to each other. Hard to miss each other, really. Well, it's good to see you're getting friends so fast. Friend. <laughs> I wonder if that's the right word to use for him. Hanako's silence during the proceeding remains, uh, reminds me of the reason I put her up to helping in the first place. We'll go help him then. He knows what he's doing, right? <clears throat> That's right, just ask if you have any problems. Oh shit, we're gonna go to <laughs> Kenji. Uh, chorusing in ascent, uh, Hanako and I begin another trek along the classroom. Kenji sits crouched on the floor, his gaze fixed on the white Kalisco in front of him. Hey Kenji! No answer, he continues dragging his paint, so to brush along the large half-painted kanji that's stretched on the sheet and pencil. Kanji? Huh, what? Who is it? If this is the way he treats class members, it's no s small wonder he's working on his own. He's working alone. It's, it's, it's me, Hassal from- Right, right, I know that, man. What are you doing here, though? His demissive attitude annoys me. He must be the type to really get focused on his work, hating to be disturbed by anyone until he's done, I suppose. While we talk, the sound of Hanako's footsteps as she walks out from- uh Oh! As she walks out from behind me. Reminds me that she's there. I was just going to help with the banner, Hanako and I, that is. He hello Oh, uh, hey, I guess that's okay. As soon as Hanako enters the equation, his demeanor takes a complete about face. His sudden fox hospitality is slightly unsettling. Oh, right, woman. On second thoughts, this may not have been a good idea after all. After all. Hanako and I gradually set ourselves down. On the opposite side of the cloth banner to Kenji, noti noting the several small paint tins on the ground around it. Class 3-2. Noodle stall? You guys selling noodles at the festival on Sunday? Yeah, some stalls outside or something. Or something. His non-committal nature sparks a fair amount of suspicion on my behalf. The task at hand comes first, though. So how do you want to split this? We can do borders while you do the text, or do you want to switch and do the borders? Text is mine, you do borders. <laughs> He was surprisingly strong feelings on the topic. As I reach over to grab a brush, I notice Hanako already debating between colors to use. By the time I've put brush to, uh, to cloth, she's already started on a delicate pattern. Looks like my idea of taking her mind off every, off everyone around here worked. 
With the dark blue stroke, the three of us silently get to work. Not before Kenji takes advantage of Hanako's working to lean towards me and whisper conspiratorially, though. Okay, man, why are you here? Hanako just wanted some help to find Lily, that's all. He apparently just approves of my motivation. I get it. It looks, looks like I misjudged you. Because they're supposed to be whispering. You're infiltrating them, aren't you? Going deep undercover. I should have guessed. Letting the truth slip in my mind would probably be better than outright lying or annoying him in any case. Is that why you're here? Obviously it sucks, but there's no better way to get intel than going in yourself. We gotta stick together, man. This is a harsh school, a harsh world. Yes, very harsh. He misses my true meaning as he leans back, satisfied I'm sympathetic to his cause. I'd better get down to work. Finished! Looks like I am too. Good job. The two of us connect up the lines of our patterns, mine being as close a copy as I could manage of hers. With the grunt, I level, I, I lever myself up from the floor and look around. Uh, aside from Hanako and myself, there's only Kenji left finishing off a sign, as well as Lily and a couple of students talking among themselves in the classroom. Looking at my watch, it's no surprise, it's getting pretty late. Need a hand? Half her hand to Hanako, which she uses to get herself up. As she does, I can't help but glance at her wrist. If her scars extend even to there, just how much of her body was burned. I feel a pang of guilt about it, however, as she quickly covers her wrist with her other hand. It's good, doesn't it? She looks surprised for a moment before noticing that I mean the banner. It does, I guess. Her smile shows that she feels a slight sense of pride in the result, and just as I do. With the floor significantly neater for the decorations being placed on desks and shelves, it's much easier to get Lily as we cross the room. We finished the banner, I guess that's all that needs to be done? Lily gives an appreciative nod. Thank you, Sal. I like oh. If there's any way I can thank you, it's fine. Beats sitting in my room studying, at any rate. I don't mind either. She nods before suddenly remembering one last person. Oh, is Kenji still here? Just as I open my mouth, Kenji gives the answer from the other side of the room. Yeah, I just finished! He carefully slides his sign onto an empty section of shelf to dry, before quickly walking past us and out the door. See you, man. Bye. Still owes me that goddamn 1,000 yen. <laughs> the remaining two students say their goodbyes to Lily before taking their cue to leave as well, leaving only the three of us. Well, I guess that's everyone. I hope we don't have to do anything like that again. Working past school time? Indeed, the class's plans this year were ambitious. Maybe too ambitious. The stalls look nice, though. She's right, it shows that a lot of work's uh, gone into them. My, my, I'm sure a lot of us would be glad to hear that. At least now there's not much work to do until the festival itself. Um, it's getting pretty late. Should we go? That's probably a good idea. Are you going back to the dorms as well, Hassel? Yeah, I guess I'll tag along. The nighttime lighting uh, really makes the gardens look quite different compared to the usual look of lush greenery, and things are much more calm. Being that it's, too, that it's so late, the lack of students around probably helps. The odd one or two can be seen scurrying to and from the dorms trying to eke the most out of their approaching curfews, but no more. All that can be heard is our footsteps, in addition to Liz Clean regularly gently tapping the ground in front of her. It's nice to finally be able to relax a bit after the mad rush during school. Without even noticing it, I let out a small yawn. Tired? Yeah, still getting used to the flow of things, I guess. The, uh, thing, which has only took me kind of off guard, though. I grip my teeth a little at the candid mention of their rather public spat. That said, uh, I do want to sort of find a sort of bit there. That said, I do want to sort out what in the world was behind it. Uh, about that. Sorry about it being so public, Shizune and I can go back some ways. Her voice seems slightly irritated as she remembers Shizune, obviously unwilling to discuss it any further. I glance at Hanako for her views on this, but her expression is unsurprisingly evasive and difficult to read. Either way, I guess her apologizing for it is something, even if my courtesy uh, goes unanswered. Oh, curiosity goes unanswered. Uh, I'll be glad once the festival is over in any case. The change of topics, welcome, uh, clearing the thickening air quickly. I can imagine my old school's festivals were a lot more low-key than this. Yamaku stress stresses the idea of a school community, so the staff likes to make our festivals in such special occasions. And yet the students are the ones who do the work. What an unfair world. <laughs> Hanako and Lily both chuckle in agreement, savoring the fact that none of the staff are around to hear our grumbling. I suppose coming from a strict all-girls school helped me a bit with Yamaku. Compared to there, Yamaku is much more relaxed. 
That'd go away towards explaining her well-bred speech and behavior in any case. As we come up to the dormitories, it eventually comes time to leave for our respective rooms. See you, Lily. On I go. The two both give polite nods before setting off to the woman's dorms, just next to the guys. As it is to be expected of such an arrangement, there's a staff member casually patrolling around outside to prevent any nighttime shenanigans. Walking past them, I quickly stretched my arms and roll my neck, both quite sore after having worked on the floor for so long before walking to my room. It feels good to actually have direction, though. After so long in the hospital, the everyday facts of studying, homework, and teachers seem almost a blessing. I guess if things continue like this, my time at Yamaku might turn out okay. Adhering to the nurse's nagging voice in the back of my head, I set my alarm clock to wake me up early enough to go jogging again. I made a promise that I'm going to keep it. Besides, Emi is bound to rat on me if I don't show up. But it's not all that bad. Alright, and uh, we're going to end off there. Is that day four? Five? I think? Deh! Alright, well, hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Katawa Shoujo. If you did, make sure to leave a button down below. There goes the alarm clock. We're getting ready. Um, and yeah, that is it for me, and, uh, yeah, I will see you all in the next episode of Katawa Shoujo.